السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم Welcome to the Majid Car Park Podcast, episode 59, take 7. How are you, buddies? I, I, thought, he said, I thought he said Tate 7. <laughs> Tate 7. <laughs> yeah. Sheikh Andrew Tate is released. Uh, yeah, brother Tate is released. Uh, there's a ITV, um, uh, there's a really good, uh, Muhammad Hijab did a really good um, interview with one t- ITV, whatever it is, his UK channel, mm. and it's on his channel. And it's worthwhile listen because there are so many things about him and his stance is, mashallah, like worthwhile listen. About Andrew Tate? No, it's not about Andrew Tate, just overall, but they asked a lot of questions about him. Yep. And he explains, you know, and there's a someone put in the comments a very nice thing that I, uh, I, I'm, I support people as much as I support Islam. Yeah, that's a pretty sick, that's a pretty sick comment. That's a good quote. And uh, yeah. mashallah, on Bhadigari. Irfan, how do you feel about that comment? No, mashallah, it's... It, it, it is indeed a good comment. <laughs> <laughs> Do yeah. you support people as much as they support Islam? <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> he's got nowhere to go. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's our loyalty to Islam, yeah, it's, right? It's so Muslims, but he, mashallah, he uh, really laid it out. Very. He? I haven't heard it. It's he. He's become like. Um, it's a very. I, I think he's took some edibles before it or something. He's so calm. And, uh, <laughs> edible what, Malana? And how do you know what edibles are? He's after iftar. Um, but, oh, but he okay. took something, whatever, he was like very relaxed and very enjoyable. And, um, you know, the things that they say misogyny, well, it depends on what you define as misogyny. Is it first wave feminism, second wave feminism, third wave feminism? There's a difference of definitions. Do I need to learn first, second, third wave? Huh? No, you don't need to. We don't need to know. Do that. I need to know? About it just, it just, it just basically feminism becomes more feral as time. We each wave it becomes more feral. <laughs> That's pretty much in a nutshell what it is. So, so do so, I agree? So he's Andy released. Oh no, he's not released. Actually, he's on house arrest. So he's back home. Oh, is he on house yeah. arrest? Oh, Mr. Tate. Yeah. I, I, you just told me before. That's how I found out. Yeah, it was on the news today. So we're recording this on the what is it? What's the date today? Oh, it is actually the, the no, it's the second now, second. isn't it? Fun. Yes, second. <laughs> it's it's just become this. We so came we, here on I the first. I requested to do this after Tarawih. Abdul Wajid want to do this at midnight. This is what twelve thirty. What one, one o'clock? Bruv, you told me eleven thirty. You're going to be here. I'm here. No, no. I told you Sunday night. What did he say? Yes, no, Sunday night. Sunday night. Sunday was impossible. We're doing this on Saturday midnight for some reason. But alhamdulillah, Saturday night then. And after this, we're um, going out to have coffee. No, no, no. We're not no coffee. <laughs> I'm Molana but wants to um, paint the town red. How's your Ramadan that? been? Ramadan, Ramadan's been, Ramadan's been good. Yeah, done a bit of travelling. Yeah, so um, Ramadan's been very good in terms of spiritually. And I'm not going to say I'm more pious because I don't feel it. How's your Tarawih going? <laughs> tarawih done my khatam for the first uh, five days. Mashallah, six days. So now you're just not doing Tarawih. Now, no, no, I'm doing Tarawih now. <laughs> Where did you? However, do the how the pressure's not on Where did to you finish one khatam. So yeah. I was at, I was with some brothers and one of them was a hufaz. So we were together for hafiz. Hufaz is a plural. Yeah. Well, he <laughs> knew many ver- <laughs> many ver- yeah. many <laughs> ayats of the Quran. He split personality. Right? He's got many personalities. <laughs> he knew many ayats Imagine of the Quran. That, like he, no, no. You had multiple personalities. They all have the Quran. Mashallah. <laughs> oh, bro. <laughs> one's an alim. No. One's a mufti. No, no, no. One's an alim that, that takes one position. One's a, uh, another alim that takes it's, another it's, position. It's like those fake sheikhs, you know. Like I got. Like wine, you know those fake babas in our yeah, yeah, world yeah. that he doesn't pray salat, but it's it like he said, I have seven souls. Six <laughs> are praying in front of the Kaaba. One is here, doesn't pray. <laughs> oh one of those guys God. probably. Uh, so with yeah. this brother, mashallah, he um from South Africa. Mashallah. So I just I, we just decided right. Actually, I pushed him a little bit. Saying how much? Bro, how long did it take? Five Jews every night. How long did five Jews take? That that I would um take? some nights it took like. Two three hours. Other okay. times it took like nice. four hours. Yeah. Depends on the mood and how tired we were. Yeah. Um. So we did five 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 five, and the second to last night we hit seven, and then the last night was three, and then he just um little bits and pieces that he felt that he missed. Yeah. He just made that one up. Okay. Nice. Um. So it w- it was a good feeling. Like yeah. It was, it was it's hard we d- yakka though. We're doing in the mosque in Doncaster. We got mo- Sheikh yeah, Don't worry about my um. You know, pat on the back or anything like that. Allah, being you'll pious. get that on the day of judgment. Um, <laughs> we're doing Doncaster. Mashallah, the Prophet Sheikh Uzair is a one of Uzair's students from uh, uh, what is it? Cha, mashallah. Uh, Quran, uh, Huda. Huda, but I think they call it Quran Academy oh, or something. Quran Academy yeah. from Dandenong. They came to it is in Melbourne, obviously. So he sent two students to Dandenong uh, to Doncaster. Doncaster, yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow, that's yeah. excellent. And they're really good. One like reads like Sudais, Sudais yeah. and the other one reads here tonight. 
Tonight, the guy, mashallah, he read Surah Yusuf, the second one. Yeah. He's got his own style, mashallah. I'm spewing, I don't, I'm, Surah Yusuf he read so Surah. nicely that one of your people, one of your um, my om, people. let my of, people one, go. One, <laughs> one of your other uh, he, um, <laughs> okay. he stood up and said, mashallah, he read, like he couldn't, because I couldn't hold it, you know, I had to say something. Yeah. Yeah. He, Really, I think he expressed everybody's feeling. It was yeah, so it was good. good. It was so nice. Really? He was like just in a zone and he read so beautifully. Yeah, like, yeah, poetically. Yeah. yeah, yeah, especially the part about Yaqub alayhi salam, about the sadness. Yes, yes, yeah, yes, how sad he is. Yeah. yeah. About separation yeah. from and Yusuf. And you could feel it. It was like, oh, it hit. Like, uh, it was yeah. so good. And then he stood up. I, I told him afterwards, this is not a mushara, yeah. you know, Urdu poetry <laughs> thing. <laughs> like, uh, or sunal, you know, like, yeah, yeah, read, yeah. Mukarrar, read again, <laughs> repeat, repeat, <laughs> repeat the line. Damn, encore, encore. Maybe. I'll come there one night and listen. He's a young guy, year 12 student. Uh, Maybe tomorrow night. Huh? I might come tomorrow night and listen. It was, um, yeah, just imagine, you know. Yeah. It's good. Uh, I <laughs> wah, 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 wah. During the week, uh, during the week, I'm in <laughs> Faulkner. And mashallah, even the Faulkner Sheikh, Mulana Ishard, I think. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's yeah. another level. Oh, yeah, mashallah. That Sheikh, no, that guy's that's another level. It's, he's, a he's another level, mashallah. But was, was the Surah Yusuf today on that level? I'd, mashallah, yeah, yeah. Surah this was, this was, was yes. like, it was just, he, eh, oof, it was like, um, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It just, yeah. That brother expressed sort of everybody's feelings, like, uh, yeah, you yeah. know. But, but, but I was surprised to know that when I shared that being a Tunisian, like his family, I mean, history. Tunisian? I thought he was Indo. I, I was told this, this one who lives in. Uh, Faulkner? Yeah. Indonesian. Indonesian. But, but they, they lived in Pakistan for 10, like. He studied there, yeah. Family lived there, yeah. Yeah. Subhanallah, like yeah, that's where he got the Qirat from. Sacrifice him. <laughs> I don't Here think he got it from Pakistan. Here we go. <laughs> I don't think he got it from Pakistan. No, get it from no, no his, his mom's actually a Qariya. Top oh, like competition, mashallah. like that level of Qariya. So I think that's where he gets it from. But mashallah. No, no, we, we're so lucky in Melbourne now. Um, 20, 30 years ago, 35, 33, like in the 80s. Like our mosque, Even accept. the 90s. In our mosque in Melbourne is continuously from the 80s as it, it's the it's the most longest khatam that we've been having the masjid that in Melbourne you've, ev- from the what, 80s, 80s you've had one khatam, khatam every, every day yeah, every, every year we had a half is always Mufti Muni before he came from Pakistan many wow. times he led Ari Dries, uh, Harun Rashid there's all these different hafaz that we had yeah. over the decades so we've had a continuous last 15 10 15 years we've 10 just over 10 years we only use local hafaz, the policy was that we only use now local hafaz but Which the, is fantastic. So, like, it's almost more than three decades of taraweeh that's in Doncaster is continuous every year. Khatam. Uh, this is the longest in Melbourne, alhamdulillah. Like, keep, keep it that way, inshallah, and I protect mean. them. But now, like, there's all these new hafaz that are coming. Like, there's one's a first year uni student. Uh, yeah? Yeah, he's a Caulfield, Caulfield student. Oh, uh, so, we were. Uh, when he studied, okay, where you're studying, the building that you're studying in now, because he's studying the same, yeah. um, he's studying business or whatever, I said, uh, you even, I was studying there when you were not even born. You know, <laughs> 18, 19. <laughs> Yeah, we feel old. Wow. Wow. Because <laughs> we both, me and Abdullah, just studied there in Monash. <laughs> that's where we met. Same building. That's where we met uh, in the early 2000s, you know? Wow. Yeah. Yeah, then, you know, Allah used me for his hidayat. And, you know, <laughs> and now um, I never miss that. <laughs> you know, you know like, I read uh, 50 Jews of Quran every <laughs> night. Allah. Like I was and looking um, at this. Uh, you know, <laughs> <laughs> this, this, this is my work. We met, we met in the tunnel, and yeah, this is my mm. fruit of my efforts. You know, yeah. like, <laughs> how many tears in Tajid? You know, <laughs> when <laughs> I saw <laughs> this suited, ba- booted Babu walking through the tunnel <laughs> in Caulfield, like, yeah. Monash. Salam <laughs> Clean shaven, and yeah. You said salam to me, did yeah, I say no, salam? I said salam. Oh, because I wouldn't recognize yeah, you. Yeah. <laughs> no way, you know, you saw some curry from this fresh off the boat. Yeah, Straight yeah. up. What? Well, like, I just remember walking through this guy. I, I think you're wearing a green jubba. With nah. a black imama. Oh yeah, my uh, I had a um, yeah. A green, it wasn't uh, green. It was um. It was just di- that dirty. That no, turquoise, <laughs> turquoise, 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 <laughs> whatever. Right? Turquoise jubba with a black with imama. My shoes. Black imama, and I'm just like, this guy's a nutter. He's a heat seeker. <laughs> right, Caulfield. Caulfield. Yahudi Central. <laughs> I, gotta, I gotta bleep that out. What? He just said something before. You guys are nutter. He's a sick heat seeker. Oh, okay. I thought you said something else. <laughs> 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 there you go. And this is how I get edited right, out. I, you better leave I this heard in. Something. You better leave. You made us do the podcast at one o'clock in the morning. You better leave in. I've got to delete that out now. <laughs> <laughs> you better not. So then people can know what I have to do. This is what I'm working with. guys unfiltered. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, did you have yeah. iftari or not? No, like no. no I, yeah. I eat once a month, brother. It's yeah. because it's Ramadan. You think I'm just going to ruin my habit. 
Yeah. Since I met you and I've become pious <laughs> through your efforts, Stuff I eat once a month now. <laughs> no, alhamdulillah, I've been like very particular about my yeah, diet. Oh, yes, I've mashallah. Been working out. Before iftar, a friend, and we work out at his house. And he d- he's on the bicycle, I'm on the treadmill. And uh, yeah, for an hour on the treadmill. It's amazing what Do the human sweat? body like the most. Like I put wow. I put on the incline 5.7 kilometers an hour, yep. so I do 5.5 5.5k's in one hour, at, and and That's on, an, inc- an incline as well. So yep. it's like one incline, ten minutes, two, three, four, five incline, mm. and then I do like a sprint at the end, just put it up like 6.5, 7, whatever, six six seven between six and seven, and then just like just run for a few minutes, and it's pretty sick. But like you drench, like you know, and you got to stop breathing through your mouth because your throat dries. Mm. Uh, there's no drink. Uh, but it's amazing what the human body is actually. And then go to masjid, um, have a look, soup, salad, and bit of fish, salmon fish, <laughs> a fish and a chai. <laughs> obviously, Bro, that photo you sent me of that salmon did yeah. not look cooked. No, no, it was cooked. <laughs> that looked like it was just caught out of the sea and it was like plonked no, on no, your. Just it's pink, that's, but it's, it's that's, nice, his, nice. that's his signature diet, you know. <laughs> Sa- salmon. That's my standard now. <laughs> salmon, salmon, and who cooks it for you? Soup. Uh, oh, same shah. brother. So his family yeah. prepares oh, it. He's doing it hard. And yeah. uh, no, he does it as a like mashallah. He prepares it. And Shalom I take everybody. it. I finish the workout, have a shower, take the bag of stuff, go to the masjid, have my iftar. Uh, so it's a pretty light iftar, yep. and then do tarawih. After tarawih, go to mom, mom's place, have something else. What do you eat there? Uh depends on the night. Um, <laughs> yeah, not too thing, but it's going good. The workout's good. Then I do weights in the night. And so there's a book uh, someone, a mutual friend, sent to me about. There's a doctor from. I think from the US, he, he talks about how to work out during Ramadan. Do you, to before me, iftar, after iftar, after tarawih, before suhoor, how to actually wow. do Yeah, like he actually talks about the hydration and all those aspects of And fasting. you're following that? Uh, some of it. So like the only thing that I took from it was, so you can work out pretty much any time. You can work before iftar, after iftar, uh, like before tarawih, after tarawih, before mm. suhoor. So um, the only thing is that the hydro, what do you call it, the tablet, the... Hydrolytes? The hydro, um, what do you call it? When you Hydroponic? No, no, the thing that you put in for salts and stuff. <laughs> yeah, hydrolyte. Hydro, that's a brand. Electrolyte. Electrolyte, yeah. So electrolyte, make sure you you have a bit of extra in the night and before mm. suhoor, and that will like replenish you, like your fluids okay. and things, and um, and that you can do that pre-iftar. So And for suhoor, I'm just having a glass of water, just having the hydrolyte and glass of water. Mm. I don't have a suhoor. So most time, most most mornings I don't have suhoor. I just have a glass. I mean, I have suhoor, a glass of water, the hydrolyte. That's it. And what about a date? So I'm doing like intermittent. I uh, think no dates. Um, I have At like all? I, if we start, I just have a little like a piece, tiny little piece, just to fill the sunnah. Why is dates fattening or something? Sugar. It's just sh- yeah. Okay. I mean, it's fine for people that are normal weight and whatever. Like if you want to lose a bit, like you got to cut out all the carbs. So I'm doing like I'm throwing everything at it. So you kitchen, know the, the kitchen uh, sink. You know this. Why? Is Huh? Why you, you know, this well, is well, the no, no. Why are you throwing? Why are you going so hard, Molana? Uh, well, it's not good, like where I'm at the moment, well, health wise. Oh. So I need to. <laughs> oh really? Oh really? I'm worried about concern for my health and. Oh yeah. mashallah, oh, mashallah. Oh, what Inshallah. Anyway, you no, know, this is the same brother who said I will not pray behind you. You know, he is the motivation behind you. Oh. Yeah, 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 that brother told me last t- a year and a half ago. He said. It just like you need to lose weight, mate. Like you know, it's not good for. Yeah. I can't pray behind you. I can't pray behind you as an imam, you know. Like uh, when you're going to ruku. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, just off-putting. So he, no, it's good motivator. Good motivator. Mashallah. Mashallah. Alhamdulillah. But alhamdulillah, yeah, good brother. Yeah. So that's pretty much my Ramadan. I'm trying to get other things done. I'm moving house as well, so that's packing and all that. How, what about madrasa? Where where are we at with madrasa? Holidays. Just hips is running at the moment, but the I saw the flyer starting on the second of May. Huh? Yeah, after a week after Ramadan, inshallah. inshallah. So inshallah. Be, the ilm class will be starting again and part-time ilm, a new class. And you year. got a full class? For, we're advertising now. Inquiries are coming in. Let's see. I thought, uh, I thought you have Umrah plan with a group. Um, no, I don't have a plan. Uh, there was some Hajj discussions, but not an Umrah plan. Yeah. Let's see. Inshallah. Inshallah. Yeah. There was a uh, Hajj plan, but I don't think the Hajj thing will go through because the Saudi... Structure is not mm. allowing, like it's really? not. It, sorry, like for an Australian group to work with the Saudi packages, which is also like a group. Do you understand? Mm. Like, so there's no proper like proper partnerships are not established yet, and yeah. How messy is it? It's not messy, but like, yeah. I mean, it needs work. It needs like um, polishing, like a lot of polishing. They need an element of local Australian or like our local guys to be involved in it. 
mm. like not from the group operators necessarily, like for guidance, for religious guidance. So maybe this is a bit early, but inshallah we're creating a resource and a hotline for people to uh, get their questions answered according to very madahib that's coming inshallah. For hajj? For hajj, for, for hajj and umrah, yeah. For hajj, mainly hajj. Well, subhanallah, that should be good. Yeah, it's, it's in the pipeline. Yeah. So that, that'll be probably next fortnight we'll announce it inshallah. 300 hajj? Yeah, yeah, something like that. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. But wouldn't, wouldn't the time, I mean, if it's a hotline, I mean, wouldn't the time difference he, he, He's going to be... No, honest. no, no. This is Australian number for Australians before they go. Okay. So they can ask Masail. Uh, we don't want to open up internationally because if you put something international like an email or a website, then everybody starts bombarding. We want to yeah. keep it for Australians only. So well, going to no, be manning the phones no, no. 24-7. I thought, I thought it would be a hotline when, when they are in Umrah. Yeah, we'll have to have a look at how that oh, will work because exactly, we want to provide yeah. the service, service to them as well. Because we've had situation where people have not, they've really messed up their hajj last year. Oh, yes. really? Yeah, 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 like be- mixing rukun, like key pillars key of the hajj from Australia. And that's because there's no proper guidance yeah, given. Yeah. I mean, it was the first time they were doing it there. But, you know, this person's going to probably only go once and you really stuff, they stuffed him around. So there's the, 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 we're not dealing with logistics, we're only dealing with masail. So it will be probably okay. according to the Hanafi, Shafi and Hanbali fiqh. Mm. Maliki, ulama are far few in between, but let's see, inshallah, maybe according to all four. So we'll provide timings and so forth, and they can call in and they can ask them aside. And if they're over there, so what? Call, make an international call to one and three hundred number from a Well, if you go on a hajj and it's your Mas- masa- yeah. masala, yeah, yeah. And if there's a masala that requires deep research, like it requires um, to like really deeply study something, then um, yeah, we can't just do it over the phone. So basic masail can answer. Like, all right, put on hold if you don't know it, like off the cuff. Then, um, you know, we don't... So you have an Ali manning the phones? Uh, yeah, we'll have yeah. We're creating the systems for that, inshallah. Wow. So make dua that w- that eventuates, inshallah. Yeah, inshallah. Because I so think that's like the uh, doctor yeah. on call. This is Ali on call. Yeah, I mean, and it's not 24 hours. It'll be like scheduled and there's mm. alims. There's already about four or five alims on board already. Oh, my Lord. Lord them. That's that's amazing. Amazing. 100%. Yeah. Because last, uh, I think last year, there's a brother who... Actually, was stranded and he had to. There was no Australian. He, he's an Australian, but there was no Australian hotline or something. They yeah, had to service. Call, they had to call. call. They call you, you the UK one. Yeah. Just the thing was that up. previously, Hajj operators hired somebody that an alim to or share travel to travel with them, provide a guidance. Since they were not, there's no business for them. Then there's no incentive for them to to organize something for the community. So then the responsibility, the onus falls on imams and communities okay. to actually. For this, so that's why we Mufti Ziyad in Dainong and others Shuk, they uh, organize various uh, program we organize in our masjid in Doncaster. So for the people that are going from our community, so it's just a free service like a class for our community to make Never sure. Never thought that, about that. Yeah, because the Hajj operator is not doing it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they came out crying about um, how they lost their business, but uh, you know, I have my opinion on that. But anyway, let's not talk about that. <laughs> they've okay. made they made their millions, so. You you made the you, you made your opinion clear in the good uh, part, you know. No, no, no. Let, let, let's <laughs> not talk about. What did he say? Let's, let's, let's not. No, no, no. It was more of a. It was a. No, no, no. I can't. We can't repeat in the podcast. I don't want a recording. Oh wow! You better not edit all this out. They know the brothers are gonna be like. Your next good guy was was one of his usual. I'm not. I'm not. I don't have much sympathy for the operator. Damn! Did he go hard? Yeah, yeah. It was one of those. I don't have sympathy. For the, uh, <laughs> I don't have sympathy because I don't have sympathy because they rorted the si- many many rorted. You the can't system. say they rorted the system because there were many. That it did. was another uh, what's that childcare thing that was there before? Remember <laughs> that the Sudanese in the childcare, you know, bro. Where are you going with <laughs> NDIS? You know, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> mm. <laughs> there are people that are yeah. yeah. Well, it's a cash no, cap. You can't, you can't compare that to hedge operators. Um, <laughs> some, some you can. Okay, it's it's so even worse. It's more so egregious. Let's, it's even let's make worse. sure we're not blanketing everyone. Yeah, yeah. No, no, not Th- all that. That needs to be made but clear. It was, some was egregious in a ta- the type of money that they were, um, like the markup that <laughs> what they were doing was not good. What are we talking about markups? Like in terms of when, when they were selling their visas to other smaller groups, yeah. what they were actually selling them for. Yeah. What are you let's leave this topic. Yeah. Let's, let's yeah. continue. Yeah. Ramadan, 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 Ramad
and you don't sleep much. You got to oh, sleep. Oh, one on of the those plane. Chinese airlines. No, you go from the like Skyscan is amazing. Like this is a, not a plug for. This is like a fifty-hour flight. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> 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 bottom bottom this is bottom like, yeah. You go from here to Colombo, <laughs> Sri Lanka. Then, yeah, Sri Lanka. Oh no! And then that's, from that's Colombo, it's the Delhi. Is there a direct flight from here to Sri Lanka? Sri Lankan Airlines. Yes. Yeah, you go from okay. here, Sri Lankan Airlines. From here to Colombo, Colombo to Delhi, and then from Delhi it's to, I think it's Dubai or one of those UAE places, and then from there it's to Jeddah or Medina, I think Medina. So then you do your Medina, whatever, Medina you know, do your ziara, and then you, mm. you got to shoot over straight away to Makkah, do your Umrah. And come right? back. Get back to Medina, <laughs> jump on the flight. <laughs> goes from there to Dubai or wherever, UAE kind of place. Yeah. Then from there it goes to Delhi again. Then from Delhi, you're going to Ho Chi Minh City. <laughs> 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 then it's Ho Chi Minh City back to Colombo. <laughs> right? But then Colombo back to Melbourne, all within like 72 hours. Bloody hell. That's a... That's a that's under... That's under like that's my memory 80, of flying eighteen hundred dollars. Sri Lanka airline Sir, or Air Salon or whatever it was before. Serendip. I, I can't remember the name. Serendip. What the hell? No, no. There was a name. A strange name. I've airline. never flown. I'm um, twenty years ago. Is the like we there was a, a, we, were, we were flying to Delhi and this um uh and we were late on the well, the plane plane was late. It's more like a budget airline. And then um, the pilot, this really big overweight guy, he comes out <laughs> and he rolls out. And the people in the conference, because we have a connecting flight to a conference in another city in India. And he said, don't worry, I will fly faster. <laughs> 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 and everyone's like, oh, all those professors from that, they're going to a conference. Oh, <laughs> they just looked at each other. And just, it was kind of funny. But, um, yeah. but have, so you, do, have you ever fly, flown Air India? Did no, you fly never. Air India in the 90s? Never. No, I've never flown. I've, right. I, I, I've it that, can't be. Now, I'm sure it's a different level. Yeah. But this was when India just opened up. Think about it. 90s, right? <laughs> Early 90s. I remember flying Air India by myself. Yeah. It was like an Indian train, guys. <laughs> like Indiana Jones. The Indiana Jones with the chickens. You know, you don't <laughs> yeah, it Indiana wasn't Jones. chickens. <laughs> but I bet you someone had a chicken in their suitcase. Uh, yeah. Uh, my, my most vivid memory is this guy sitting next to me. He was hectic. He wouldn't... Whatever the... The flight attendant was t- serving. He's just mashing it. <laughs> he's brought around peanuts. I don't like peanuts. I go, no, thank you. And he just looks at me and goes, you could have given it to me. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> Whatever she brings, take it, give it to me. <laughs> right? I'm like, I'm 16 years old. I'm like, no, no Hindi. I just pretend all I knew was English, right? He's sitting like this. And then I had my bag and I was scared to fall asleep. Yeah. Right, so I had my bag tied around and under me in case, you know, things go, walk. Oh, it was... It was horrendous. People sleeping in the, the wet, the, the what's it called? The hope, the, the passageway. Whoa, far out. M- at night time, <laughs> you wake up to go to it the toilet. Like bro, bro, <laughs> not. I'm not exaggerating. Night time, you wake up to go to the toilet. Mr. Jones, Mr. Jones. Yeah, Mr. Uh, Indy, <laughs> save me, Indy. Right? There's people sleeping on the floor, underneath the seat, chairs. Yeah. Ooh. And there was one guy. I'm not saying the whole plane was packed. That's an exaggeration. Yeah. Help. One guy just decided to plunk himself in the hallway. When all the lights are off, everything's off. And I'm just like, <laughs> how do I go to the toilet? How do I step over this guy? They're just lying, sleeping there. With a blanket over his head. <laughs> uh, Indian trains. You know, I hope there was no chicken or something. And, the, and the Mumpa, Mumpali you know, guy comes. And the, the Mumpali. <laughs> the chai. Chai. Garam chai. Garam chai. Hot tea. The flight attendants are like, uh, five rupees for the chai. <laughs> what, uh, what, is it, uh, what is it? The times when they had, the, you know, the people just to carry their own food in no, the plane. I only flew it once. It wasn't they yeah. were carrying their own pla- food, but after that, that trip, I was like, I'm never flying these airlines again. Whoa. Whoa. And their <laughs> track record in terms of safety, even within India, was shocking. Back then. We'll, mm. do, we'll fly fast. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, yeah. yeah, that says it all. <laughs> Don't worry, I'll fly faster. <laughs> what do you mean, mate? <laughs> yeah. Allah. What else? How's Ramadan? Everything else? Ramadan's look, like I said. Ramadan's been good. Work's been pretty quiet because I was away for a couple yeah. of weeks. Um, back into it now. It's yeah, just make dua for people, man. Yeah. There are some people doing it very hard. Others are enjoying Ramadan. Um, there are a lot of people. I'm actually are, like this year. Like I just, I just, I want. I'm enjoying the khatam. You know, the, yeah. I'll probably miss one day. Mufti Abdul Rahman's coming next week. Abdul Rahman bin Yusuf, Shalom. Abdul Rahman Mangera from UK. So because I'm facilitating, helping out with the program a little bit, and inshallah, hopefully we'll, maybe, inshallah, let's see, 
getting for the podcast. Inshallah. Um, if we do, then um, inshallah. But th- that one day I have to, so I'm sort of like helping with the host hosting. So um, the one Sunday I probably miss in Doncaster, I'll do my own tarawih. Um, for that juice, uh, I've already uh, done mine. So yeah, all right. Masha <laughs> <laughs> Um But other than that, like um, I, I want to pray all my tarawi in one mosque in our mosque because usually I used to miss last year because I'm living far away, and mm. um, so I need like a break because driving back. Yeah, this forth. is the first time I've heard you say oh, I want to do my. Um, I'm enjoying tarawi. I'll oh, maybe set them in time. No, so I've <laughs> never heard you say it before. Yeah, this. I'm actually enjoying it. No, like actually, yeah, the tarawi is like it's so nice. The, those um, hufas must be amazing. They're very good. They're very good. Mashallah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. young and good. Mashallah. What yeah. about your, your Ramadan, your fun? Uh, my alhamdulillah, it's been good. I've been in Faulkner and go d- uh, during the weekends. Then I go back to Doncaster, mm. my local masjid. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. yeah. I was telling the missus. You know, I, I, I was telling the missus yeah. at the start of Ramadan because we're talking about traveling flights and things like that. And we're talking about it. And I was like, I haven't been on a plane since pre COVID. Really? I had not been on a plane oh, well. since pre COVID. Within the space of two weeks, <laughs> Melbourne. Sydney, Perth, Auckland, <laughs> Brisbane, Melbourne. Mashallah. Mashallah. Yeah. Those type of tri- trips make me hate. Like I said, I, I need a break. For one year, I don't want to fly. You know, the only one that was the trip to Perth. Oh, yeah, that's like an international. That, no, that was purgatory, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was painful. It's like an international. Coming back was all right, but going there, because yeah, it, yeah, it, yeah. it takes longer, but yeah. it doesn't end. It's 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 international trip, man. It's like an international trip. It's I did I used to go for Hajj it lectures. It does not end. I don't, I don't know how you did it. I, I I would go in the I would arrive in the morning, and then I finish the lectures, and then I'll fly the same day. Wow! So it's eight hours, whatever. On I don't know how you did that. Eight hours and four four airport like. That's trips. basically no sleep. That's a, that's Is like that going economy to, as that's well. The same as like going to Bali or Indonesia. Is that economy? Yeah, f- yeah, economy. Yeah. Get that premium. Then like it doesn't give, give you first class. The, the sheikh, the yeah, unfortunately <laughs> not. You know, yeah. So but you I know what? But, but do you know what? The Perth to the Melbourne Perth trip. Either way, even if you buy business class or first class, there's not that much difference. Yeah, Just yeah, extra yeah. legroom. That's it. Yeah, yeah, and a little bit different food, but we're fasting anyway. Yeah, but that was. I that did. I did a trip like that after Hajj to South Africa. It was like, uh, like I think it was like Jeddah, Johannesburg, Durban, Johannesburg, Durban. Back to my thing, back to Malaysia, to Malaysia, spend in Malaysia, and then uh, Melbourne. It's like it's just like this one week Space of, of ha- six. One week. This is like within one week, all these flights, all economy. And I said, I do not want to. I don't want to see aeroplane. I don't want to see an airport for like a year at least. No, I enjoyed it. Yeah. I, I, after these trips, I, I'm going to travel a lot more. I got that feeling when I went for Omrah last year, post COVID. Just when COVID opened up in Omrah, mm. we went with a group. It was like getting freedom, getting out of Australia, yeah. the convict colony. Uh, that Andrew, Dan Andrews imposed upon us, uh, but uh, <laughs> it was like freedom, oh, like it's getting out, I like lo- back to a little bit of normality. Yeah, I loved what Keating said. Being a Keating in that speech where he goes, "We left them two hundred years ago, the now British, we're going the, back." Well, it wasn't a speech; it was an interview on the, um, uh, uh, press. Uh, uh, what is it? Uh, the press club. Yeah, yeah, it was really. The guy is sharp, Paul Keating. He's a phenomenal. He's always if been. If you like watch that. that, it's yeah. a you know, it's the best prime minister. Um, yeah. That we hands probably down, had, like hands life, down, without, without a doubt. Just someone who's articulate, smart on the ball. Um, he like basically pretty much created the superannuation and he's real. scheme. And yeah, but like I was actually impressed. He's old now, but very, mm. very impressive. Like in his articulation, if you there's only one flaw in that whole thing. What's that? When he came to the Uyghur question, yeah, look, he I, was like slippery. No, when he came to the Uyghur question, for him it was. It wasn't that he was slippery with the Uyghur question. He was more annoyed with the reporter. Because yeah. they were talking about Let's Modi and Kashmir. Yeah. And yeah. so he was like, no, then why do you do this with him? Why don't yeah. you, you got talk soft, about both of them equally? Yeah, you, you tr- yeah you're you soft got with him. Soft touch on India. Yeah. yeah, soft touch on India. You're a soft touch on Modi. Yeah, yeah. Right, so India. why don't you compare the... No, he said Modi specifically. Modi. No, 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 so why don't yeah. you compare the two equally, right? Yeah. That's what he was saying. And for him... And, and he, he was talking about in the the game of statesmanship. He's talking about protecting Australia, Australia's interests. Yeah. That's what, and I'm not saying yeah, what he's doing Yeah, you don't go into right. the yeah, you don't. entrails of... Like, what do you say? You don't go d- dig down into the entrails of a nation state when you're talking about 
uh, that's international correct. politics. That's because, correct. Because they can come around and say, well, how come yeah. you've got so many Aborigines dying in custody? Yeah. So you, they can turn around that. But that still doesn't, he doesn't still, I, I get what he's doing. Um, he's just, look, I'm not sticking yeah, off with yeah. the guy, but he's just being a statesman, which is, I'm going to worry about Australia. Yeah. Australia, yeah. And the AUKUS thing is very That's bad. A, like he's, bro, I didn't realise that the submarine... And, how, and how, yeah, how bad of a deal it is for it's Australia. It's a very bad deal. Yeah, yeah. It's like it's three submarines we're going to put next to China and instead we can have 45 boats or subs, and Colin class, they can't even, protecting uh, but Australia. But they can't even protect Australia, these three. Yeah, yeah, they yeah. need deep water <laughs> yeah, yeah. to operate. Yeah, they have to be off the continental shelf and so forth. So it, it was basically... It was basically... It was a really bad... We're, we're just an arm of the US... Um, Defense force. Yeah, he said those dopey guys in um, Canberra, the agencies, the intelligence agencies, and also listen to the. Because what did he say? Listen to the idiot in Washington. <laughs> That's the way he put it. I mean, His language he can't is even put two, hasn't lost. He said he can't put three coherent, three coherent sentences together. What's that? Washington, Biden. He's talking about him because yeah. he can't even put a few coherent sentences together. Yeah, he's talking about the. But you, have you seen um, Keating's greatest hits on YouTube? Mate, do yourself a favour. Yeah, no, no, I've seen it, yeah. Oh, he's just no, the way no, he used I, to I, slaughter I, yeah, the politicians. I played it for him. The way he used I to slaughter the politicians. It's, it's, it's amazing how, I mean, being off politics, he keeps record of all those, you know, the details and the numbers. No, no, that's the now one, but yeah. like his level no, of... But even it, back not, in the day. Yeah, yeah. There's a, there's a famous mo- the top ten of just watch it this YouTube. I want to do you play, slowly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the favorite top one. That's the favorite. And, uh, in, the, in the yeah, yeah that's a, and you can tell he's enjoying classic, himself. Like you told John Howard should take a Valium. And like you know, he's a, he's a, he, he he was a character, but he did a lot of good for the country and trying to create a forge. And he, he did, did the ninety two apology or acknowledging what the wrongs were done to the Aborigines yep. uh, or First Nations or whatever. And um, same thing with. Um, um, you know, with that, with superannuation, um, refusing to, I will not go to Gallipoli because it will yeah. use that's mm. strains we use as cannon fodder, wasn't really our war, but he went to the Kokoda Trail. Like, yep. he really sort of forged for a politically and geopolitically an Australian um, identity. identity. Yeah. Like, but then we're not English, we're not the British, we're not Americans. Yeah, but the Howard era came We're part of Asia. Did, and we the got Howard era came in and did all that. Yeah, yeah, unfortunately. Right? Yeah. He, and we became a, just uh, an extension of America. Yeah, we went to wars for their right. wars and we paid and the that, price that was, for that. That was Johnny yeah. Howard, and history will judge both of these men. Yeah. I mean, he didn't just say, he, but the thing with Keating was he wasn't just, okay, we're part of um, Asia, so we'll listen to whatever they say. Do you remember when he called Mahathir recalcitrant? A what? Mahathir, doctor in Malaysian Prime Minister, he called him recalcitrant. And then there was this massive like diplomatic issue, mm. whatever. He's like, nah. And then when the Queen came, he put his hand on her back to yeah, help her yeah. through. And then <laughs> everyone's like, he touched <laughs> the Queen. Yeah. Like, I'm just giving her a hand, mate. She's old. <laughs> 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 yeah. Uh, <laughs> worthwhile listen. Well, I like giving yeah, me yeah, that. I mean, <laughs> I would be happy yeah. with that. That's one no, guy. But, that uh, I like the happy. way when he said, when, uh, you know, Taking the independent views of the four people, I mean, all are China hawks or something. Yeah, all the yeah, China yeah, hawks. Yeah. And he goes, oh, he knows all the names, names and, and, and oh, he he's knows. on top of it. Oh, like, he's I'm, on I'm top impressed that his, his memory and his articulation and Mashallah. and he like he he those reporters. He goes, you should be hang your head in shame, shame for writing yeah. that. <laughs> like the way he he still got. And, the, and the reporter came back with, "We're very proud of our reporting." reporting yes. yeah. That's all he could say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. like he ripped them. You know, <laughs> that's worth it. Yeah, I was reading the comments it's today. One guy was like, "I've listened to this for the third time, and I'm still enjoying it every time." Yeah, yeah. I need to listen to it again. It, yeah. it was a, it was an enjoyable listen. Yeah, yeah. Like it really sort of made you proud. Look, Auss- oh, Aussies have their own. Um, However, the next day, all the mainstream media shredded him. Yeah. Yeah, that's the weird thing. Even the he left, lost his the mind. left, they call him. Yeah. Oh, he's the angry old uncle, yeah, and yeah, yeah. the cartoons are made. Like and both sides are attacking him, but he said the root and the work. Uh, what do you call it? The you know the uh, the party membership at the lowest level, the yeah. main, like the they're main, waking up to it. He said if they knew how this deal was done, he goes, they will not be acceptable of. Th- they will not be accepting of this. So he said that this is done. These three people, Penny Wong, yeah. uh, Albanese, and one other person he mentioned, because these three have cooked this up at the top. They've ignored now. Orcus was the rank and file the liberals. Yeah, but because this is the rank and file of uh, Labor has not uh, been a party to this. If they know how this was done, he goes most Labor like he's got a good sense. But the media, it's like almost they've taken like like the way they do in America, like CIA, CIA talking points. 
In that's what it is. That's this whole it's, it's deal, like this whole ACO thing is or whatever, when you, talking the, points. Yeah, and they're trying to make him look like an idiot. Yeah, yeah, but like he's just a mad man, just you know, yeah, yeah. talking. How I think the general population that's not on the mainstream media that's looking at everything else will look at this yeah. and, hey, look, I didn't know most of the information that he was talking about. Yeah, and the points that he put forward, they make sense. Yeah. They genuinely make sense, especially when it comes to the defense like of Australia. Like, why are we going to... When it comes to defense of Australia, one of the points that he made was defend our borders because we don't have borders yeah, with he said one. Else. He said we set one foot on our Think territory. we're going to blow the crap out of you. Yeah, we, th- that's it. Like, you cross the line. But yeah. Yeah. So we will defend, Not it's not a um, um, uh, forward defense. Mm. I don't know, man. Where are we going with this? Yeah. And then we have to store the um, spent nuclear fuel. <laughs> from these submarines, yeah, in Australia, and he said they only fire, in, in, they only in, fire in normal missiles in and Milton. Anyway, worthwhile listen. Uh, we're not gonna, we're not <laughs> political pundits, uh, but uh, just something that's happening that's ch- going to change the course of Australian history in terms of how yeah. we how we pivot as a country in the region. So it's going to affect, especially this sort of anti-China sentiment. And listen to Paul Keating's greatest hits. Do yourself a favor. <laughs> <laughs> you have a good laugh. Back to Ramadan. Um, so anything else? How long we got left? Two weeks? Three weeks? Yeah, we just the first December ten, what, first week ten, one. First ten finish here. Yeah. Um, yeah, about to first finish. First ten, yeah. twenty on the third. Yeah, yeah. Wow, that went quick. Yeah, yeah. Now twenty days, and I think when you're it busy with Amal and you got things to do, Mashallah. Um, Ramadan is just Allah. Ramadan has been in Amal all the time, <laughs> <laughs> morning, noon, and night. All he does is pray, bro, <laughs> and read Quran. Uh, and work out, <laughs> and even when he's working out, he's doing dhikr. Yeah, Allah. Yeah. Allah. 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 His khushu and khudu, his focus is purely on haqira. Allahu Akbar. Yeah, alhamdulillah. <laughs> <laughs> I like accept, inshallah. I'll give you tawfiq too. Did you get to <laughs> I'll give you the ability. Yeah. Did you get to hear the, 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 the new restrictions that the Saudi imposed on the, of, of Ramadan, on the so. masajid? I think that's uh, the trans. It's been mistranslated, maybe mis. Uh, there's some restrictions, but I don't think it's as bad as it's made out to be, as far as I know. Yeah, but for the local masajids that they are there, not not, not the harams, not the haram. Yeah, 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 but there's some sort of. I think they're adding like procedures. To I got no idea to do with the tikaf and so forth. Yeah, but no, no more, no more like no more making iftar in the masjid. It was something to do with cleanliness. Oh, really? Yeah. No it wasn't exactly. Yeah, but like that's that. the excuse they're going to use, Someone. of course. No more. But what? What? I don't think it's exactly like that. And no more video, like recording any of the, except for the haramain. Yeah, that's yeah. fair enough. That's fair. I, I, like I, even we stopped fair. it in our mosque. I think during COVID we went overboard with that. Okay. So in our mosque, like, people just come into the mosque. Mosques are open. Why are we? No, but, why uh, are we streaming? No, but for for Saudi Arabia, it's, it's been happening too, and before COVID. Yeah, the but the thing, I think I think that what they want is that these are our main places, haramain. Imams of the Haram is amazing, and Makkah and Medina. There's full TV channels dedicated to it. Why does every Imam have to have no, but, a stream? But there are those people who who tend to say that you know those Imams that were found for Haram were found through this media of platform. Some I of think I, I, I just was just, it there? Just, yeah, some of them were. We got We got We got I mean, just for me, I'm not defending them, but at the same time, the state can decide on certain things. There are certain things, decisions they might have made. We, c- we can say criticize them that this is uh, probably. What about that? I had 10. Yeah, 10, 10, 10 rakats now. 10 rakats for Tarawih? I don't know about the 10 rakats. Yeah, thing, 10, 10 rakats now. Yeah, all right. Uh, well, uh, that's uh, from Omar Adina's time, it's been 20. So so that's a separate issue. That's a fiqhi thing. All right, there's a problem when the state interferes with something that is well known and practiced by the Ummah across the world and all the madahib except that is 20 rakat. That's a different issue. The But the. When, like, for example, they, they, they impose a decibel. Uh, level on the um, Sajid. Uh, azans, right? Yeah, azan, the but volume. That's, that's yeah. fair enough because in the old days, if the azan can reach all the people that live in the vicinity, mm. the idea is not to make the loudest azan to hurt. It's for everybody that can hear it to come to the salat. The ones that do pray in the mosque. And so if they restrict that, people can still hear the azan. Mm. Think about it. In the time of Rasulullah Sallam, pretty much until the modern Allah age, Allah people just they go by the uh, person standing in the minaret. Mm. Right, so there's no requirement to even use a microphone Islamically. Do you understand? So is, there's no there's no Islamic there's no hadith. Yeah, when you put it like no that, yeah. for a microphone. Cool. So that's one thing. Well, he, that, that, yeah. that, that's one thing. And yeah. then also, um, you do not have multiple adans going off like in very small. So they they're restricting it, but I don't think they're totally 
getting rid of it. Mm. So the, the, the and, and you've got to think about people that are living next to the masjid and the guys, t- the speakers next to your bedroom and it's full blast and you've got kids, you know. So there are places like uh, in India as well and other places yeah. where they don't use microphones. They just do, they do adhan at the doorstep of the masjid or in the minaret without a microphone. And that's for the because it's for the if it's for the daily salat it's for the neighborhood. It's for the people and in the, the neighborhood, neighborhood can hear, you know. So, so I think like if you look at you each know, po- each policy, even the iftar in the, the joint iftar, I don't mm. think it's just. What do you mean joint iftar? Uh, like, like a community iftar in in the mas- in the masajid. Like they yeah, yeah be, they don't usually have courtyards. We're talking about when we're talking about masjid, like in Masjid Nabawi, they have iftar, right? Iftar, yeah. Have you been in Ramadan? That Ramadan? No, I've not been there, but I've so, seen so Monday. But they have a procedure of cleaning and yeah. so forth. I think it was to do with cleanliness and something like that, you know? Is there a requirement? So, what is iftar there? Is it dates and water or what is it? I've never Yogurt, seen it. bread. They have a few things like duk, 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 uh, duk, uh, I forgot the name. It's like a herb. They put yogurt. It's like a little, yeah. They have a little, like a you put <laughs> in yogurt <laughs> and bread, and uh, it's like traditional bread and dates, dates and some or, or water, and um, yeah. So it's like a, a very basic, mm. and then they pack it up very quickly. But maybe Mashallah. cleanliness was not maintained or something like that. So they wanted to be a bit more professional, yeah. right? I, Are you having to be invited s- by the Saudi authorities to be like an imam? No, no, but <laughs> some, some, of, some, For of the next some of the criticisms <laughs> no, c- can be valid. Agreed, yeah. But, but not, also, not, the s- not, not all of them, I mean. But the state is responsible. Yeah, but it's, people it's like criticizing. It's, it's their prerogative as a state. They can see what's beneficial. But if it's, if it's used as a means of like just um, diminishing public displays of Islam and community... I think that's a problem. They, if that, if that's part of a, the problem is that this overarching, which has been going on for the last decade almost now, where they keep just constantly making these incremental In, changes. Yeah, incremental, and you yeah. don't even. Know, but think about where but, we were ten years ago to where we are now. No, but you, you, you have been to. Okay, mm. I mean uh, the amount of poor. I mean, I mean the local people there, there, are there. I mean mm. those what are from the immigrants people, they depend on this iftars. I mean, if you know, then you mm. and they come from far off. They stay far. We're talking oh, about people that know, have come yeah. for Umrah, or no, no, the people who are working there. Immigrants but they're laborers; they're getting yeah. paid. So but they they all, they all depend on this, and now they have to come. I to don't know. I don't know. I don't know if that's right. I think maybe they're trying to fix that up. But I'm not sure. Like, uh, yeah, um, yeah, probably. I'm. They're trying to get a job with Saudi. Aren't I think. You? I think. Sorry. They're trying to get a job with the Saudi. <laughs> <authority>. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> No, no, but, but no, no. But call I, me anyway. I, I think each of the <laughs> items have. I think you can sift through them and look at them carefully. Yeah. We shouldn't have a knee jerk reaction. Okay, everything the Saudis do is bad. Hundred no, um, percent. But they make a lot of. They're making a lot of blunders islamically. We know that yeah, yeah. because so many other things have happened mm. uh, before this. But um, I think some of the things okay. on this specific thing that thing ah. that's been put out, they're not all like. For example, dua qunut. Like this is what's dua qunut. So that it's according to the Hanbali Mazab, dua qunut Allah Mahdina fi man hadait. Now there's a masnoon one that is mentioned, but what was happening is that like nearly a, khut, a dua was done. There was like a lecture in itself. Yeah. So they were like, the best taraweeh system is what we have. What, is, what was in the haram before the twenty rakat and how it was mm. done? Sheikh Sudaish Sharim, all those ones were doing it. It's streamlined. This is generally how the subcontinent do it. People were questioning. At the beginning of Ramadan, there were some discussions in groups and what's in Australia, why we need to do khatam and so forth. Khatam was instituted from the beginning of Islam. Omar Dilano. One of Sahaba Ubay bin Ka'ab made him a imam and to read 20 rakats in the masjid do khatam with the whole community. Right? The whole community is brought together to pray and listen to the whole Quran in Salat in one month. It's a beautiful thing for you know, to bring the community yeah. mm. together, number one. And it's in as per the instructions of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Umar awesome. is making sure implementing this and institu- institutionalizing it and it's institutionalized till now. The, some people insist on doing eight, but very few can do the khatam properly in eight. And then some people say, well, don't worry about the khatam, we'll just do 20 and just read short surahs. It's fine, it's still taraweeh. But that original one where the 20 from Umar al-Din's time, and which he took from Rasulullah Sallallahu not from himself. The thing is that, the, especially like the subcontinent community, you got to give it to them in terms of um, making sure there's a hafiz. Yeah. You gotta give like a you know like a hats off to them that they make sure they invest in hufas and madrasas that produce hufas. Number one, mm, yeah. then they do the tarawih institutionals, make sure hufas read. They're not reading from the mushaf; they're reading from not memory. Just tarawih, even um, itikaf, all of these. 
Well, itikaf, no, in our masjid, generally the itikaf is coming more from, I would say, generally, it's coming a lot of Arab brothers to do itikaf yeah? as well. Yeah, 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 so yeah. it's a mix. Itikaf it's a mix. is mixed. Yeah, yeah. But for specifically for the khatam, investing in hifs, number one. Number two, then taraweeh and 20 rakat and getting khatams done. Have a look across Melbourne. Who are the yeah. fukfas that are doing it? Who each other masjids that are doing investing in it, make sure that it's done. I think it's a good habit and discipline that our communities, alhamdulillah, have invested in and they're implementing it and they replicate it everywhere all over the world. Some people object to that. Oh, why we need to do khatam? We're going to add a lecture in the middle. At eight rakats, we add a lecture. At ten rakats, we add a lecture. Drag it out. We do it efficiently. Yes, we do. Like we do it efficiently and it's a good thing And because people are working. It's still work for people. Within one hour, everything's done. Aisha, Tarawih, everything. Maybe there's a lecture. I do like a 10-minute lecture before it, mm. um, uh, before the Tarawih. But in a very one and a half hour at the moment, everything, everything's an hour, hour and a half, everything's done. And we're getting a khatam done within yeah, 27 mashallah. days. 27, 28 days, the khatam is be completely being done, alhamdulillah. So that's, we got to, you, you, it's a good thing we should be promoting and making sure bring the hafiz to do it. And to do a khatam in 20 rakat. Uh, the reason I mentioned 20 because eight, seldomly people do, the people insist on eight, very few of them. There's one hafiz, like he was in a mosque where there were Salafis and Salafis insisting that or there was it has to be eight, not twenty. All right, it's gonna be. I'm gonna do eight. He said I couldn't do it. It's very hard to do. I've prayed one one salat, uh, one tarawih behind eight. Where they were trying to do one and a half Jews. Yeah, it's it's not the yeah, same. Yeah, yeah, it's not it's not the same. There's the things that are work, and then they are replicatable, and they can do it every year continuously, yeah. and the community is there with it the whole time. So. Like we got to institutionalize them, create that discipline uh, in the community. You can't do eight, you can't do twenty. You're sick or whatever. That's fine. You can go home or pray mm. sitting down even. But that one hour and a bit, um, and to read at a good pace, not too fast, not too slow. You know, like in a very yeah, yeah, yeah. efficient. So you can still hear it. Like if you see Sheikh Sudais and Sheikh Shuray in the Haram Imams, they have they're very efficient. Right, they're reading yeah. fast at a good speed. They're getting the taraweeh done. And you can, you the can still understand what they're saying, or not maybe yeah. the translation, but you can you know what they're saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's clearly. a good pace, nice pace yeah. for taraweh. Um, but it's more common in the South Asian, uh, India, yes. Pakistan, Bangladesh, Afghanistan, Burma, all these countries like Muslims from that part of the world. They've really like institutionalized it nicely in an efficient way, and I think that should be a model that we're getting the whole Quran done as a community in our local masjid. Um, and alhamdulillah now in Melbourne, like I cannot speak for the other cities, but it's there in the other cities as well. But alhamdulillah, Masajid are like adopting this model. It's, it's, it's an efficient model. It's a good model um, and it works. And you, uh, instead of adding lecture, unnecessary lectures in it, yeah, yeah, man. Uh, we don't need that many nah, lectures. We don't, we don't. 10, 15 minutes before Tarawih or out. after Tarawih is enough to give just motivate. And um, like we don't need to do more than that. Some brothers have even quit vaping this Ramadan, mashallah. Yeah, there are brothers like, out there. I like except uh, that have quit the vapors. Uh, yeah, intentions of quitting yeah. and and uh, going through with it. Mashallah. Alhamdulillah. Good job, good job, Malana. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> good yeah, job. Yeah. No more hiding in your office. <laughs> yeah. Alhamdulillah. Yeah, alhamdulillah. Yeah. Alhamdulillah. alhamdulillah. Now we make dua, man. Inshallah. Make dua for the Ummah. It's going good so far, and Allah give everyone tawfiq that we amen. spend some time in the reading of Quran. My dear brothers and elders, yeah. and ulama kram, and whoever else is listening in. Spend a lot of time in dua. Yeah. We need to make a lot of dua for the ummah all over the place, individually, our families, ourselves. The world yeah. is an interesting place. The world is a place of test. Mashallah. Khatib. The world Imam is a place. Abdu, I just started his khutbah at <laughs> 1 o'clock in the morning. It's 1.30. 1.30. Main thing, th- thing is dua. Yeah. Spend a lot of time I in dua. I love to listen to your khutbah. Can, you, can, you, can, you, can we do a collective dua? Uh, Quickly. But what if Allah does not want the podcast to finish quickly? <laughs> no, no. Allah uh, Allah Allah accept, Allah accept your talk. intention for khutbah. Um, <laughs> leave it till next week. Like my father said to me in the Jumal khutbah once, Rahimullah. <laughs> he said, uh, I went over the time. In the middle of the khutbah, he told me, nah. He said, Tell them tell tell them next week. <laughs> Were you there? No, 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 he wasn't there. But <laughs> but uh, brothers were laughing when they heard it. Like in well, front in of the, the middle of the khutbah, he said that? Khutbah in the front of the whole mosque. You know, he said, tell them next week. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I wish I was there. Yeah. Alhamdulillah. I had the, uh, uh, Alhamdulillah, I had the, the 500 um, uh, khutbahs I think I gave in front of my father in his lifetime. Alhamdulillah. So, 
Um, That's a lot. Yeah, yeah. And 500. I, I used to get shaked. 500? Yeah, f- How? 50 a year, roughly. Yeah, 40, 50 a year, over like 10, 50, 10 to 12, maybe 15 years. T- more than 10 t- decades, yeah. Maybe 400, maybe not 500. And they yeah. listen to every single one of them. He's there, mate, sitting in chair. It, you know, it took me a long time, even when I was giving dars, like he used to sit on the left side in the corner yeah, of my eye. Yeah, I remember. He used to I sit remember. there and give his uh, constructive uh, feedback. <laughs> criticism. And, uh, <laughs> criticism, yeah. And uh, so even like for like a long time after he passed away, he, like his like his presence was still there because oh. I did it for so many years. Were you like, you are still watching me? No, no, no. You're like gone, but no, I no, know but you're pre- here. I felt he was there. Because of that, I couldn't go like felt, off script. To, uh, I couldn't go off script because I know <laughs> I was going to cop it. Like, and there's certain things I couldn't say. And, uh, and now you don't care. <laughs> no, no, I do. It still uh, it, it molded me. But like he, he was, um, yeah, alhamdulillah. Th- alhamdulillah. Th- ha- having him there. You know, um, uh, subhanAllah, one brother came to me the other day and he said to me that, uh, that he was saying, he was talking, because when we, they visited my father before he passed away, about a month before, and uh, he said that, um, you know, take care of Khalid, you know, take care of him. Because <laughs> he's a loose uh, cannon, yeah. he's got no <laughs> yeah, idea what no, he's no. doing. <laughs> no, no, it was just, oh, it was touched, mm-hmm. like, you know, oh, mashallah, like he said, uh, after, he goes, make sure, you, you. make sure you stay with him and you take <laughs> care of him, like, sort of thing. Like, it was a good, it was a good, it was like, it was a, oh, he was, if he was dying. He's reaching out he from da- the grave. Uh, yeah, he was dying, but then, like, after five years or whatever, He's still like, like is there. Like you know what it was? Mm. I'm still watching you, mate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 it was, it was, mashallah. So, and he passed away in Ramadan. Every My uncle passed away in Ramadan. He, he, he <laughs> he's passed away in Ramadan as well. Just like Allah, <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Please stop. <laughs> this guy. <laughs> anyway. <coughs> Allah fill his grave with Noor. I mean, I mean, you know, Allah forgive me, have mercy upon him. I mean, I mean, um, it's sometimes when those things you miss them, they're like that's uh, yeah. So you have your parents still, so value your parents and um, you yeah, make the most of it. Inshallah, Allah protect them all and give it. May Allah Ameen. protect us all and forgive Can all our people that have passed away. I mean, I mean fill their graves with Noor. Can you play? Um, the acapella version of that? No, no, At no, the end of the podcast? No, no, no. And then no, you look on, off man. into Let's the distance? Serious. I'm sharing a very emotional, <laughs> touching thing. Yeah, yeah I'll, I'll touch you after. But and <laughs> you're talking about the police, you know? Like, well, what's wrong with you? <laughs> what's wrong with you? I like giving you that. Anyway, How did late. you know it was the police? It's late oh, now. busted. We've got, we, we've, we're getting into the uh, nonsensical stage Thank of the podcast. Thank you very much for watching. Please like, subscribe, and press the bell icon. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam.